So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the new Fitbit Charge 4. This is currently 150 bucks, and it comes in four different colors. You've got black, rosewood, storm blue and black, and a special edition granite reflective woven that costs $20 extra. The main features they're advertising with this Charge 4 is built-in GPS, 24-7 heart rate tracking, sleep tracking, Fitbit Pay, Spotify control, sleep score, and this one's got a battery life up to seven days. Now this does include the small and large size bands, so you don't have to worry about whether you got the right size or not. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. Now in case you're wondering, I'm currently using the Versa. This one's actually for my wife to replace the Charge 2. So in case you're not familiar with Fitbit products, they usually use their own proprietary charging cables. And this one's not extremely long, but this one should get the job done. And I believe this is the first Fitbit product to be released since the buyout by Google. They do include the larger band. Welcome card and support. Product information. Inside the box is just directions to install the Fitbit app, which we don't need to do since I already have a Fitbit. Okay, so this definitely seems a little bit nicer than I remember from the Charge 2, where it's a gunmetal material there for the clasp. You can see the heart rate sensor there on the back. And I gotta say this black material matches really nice with the band. Then you just hit the button there on the bottom in order to release the band. The only buttons you have on this one is on the left hand side. And it looks like this one doesn't have any battery life. I'm gonna go ahead and charge this up and then we'll come back and look at the software. We'll also take a look at what some of the features are. So since I already have the Versa, it wants me to switch to the Charge 4. So we just put in this number. Looks like there is an update. So let's go ahead and install that. You can see it does have a progress bar on the Charge 4. Once that's done, we should be able to continue. And then what they recommend, just like a lot of other Fitbits, is to make sure it's loose enough on your wrist to slide up and down. Usually it takes a little bit before I find out which notch to use. That's probably pretty close. So for me, I'm gonna try out the fourth notch and see how that goes. Now one thing you'll probably want to do with this is add it as a trusted device so that it connects automatically if you're using Android that is. So by swiping up it's going to reveal your stats like step, sleep and more. Pressing on the button on the side is going to take you back to the previous screen. Swiping down is going to show you the latest texts or calls and then press and hold the button for do not disturb or screen wake or other modes as well. And then swiping left shows your apps. Now they do recommend cleaning your band and wrist regularly with soap-free cleanser. If your Charge 4 gets wet, remove and dry completely after your activity. And take occasional breaks from wearing your Charge 4. If your skin gets irritated, be sure to remove the tracker. It also mentions Charge 4 has a small hole for the altimeter. Don't insert any items into the hole as you can damage the device. And that's pretty much it as far as getting it set up. And then obviously you're going to want to link this to the Fitbit app. Now it looks like they have a free trial for 90 days of their at home health and wellness content. I don't think I'm going to be trying that right now. So I'll just close out of that.
Inside the app settings, you can choose which clock face to use. Which I don't mind this one actually, but let's see what other ones are available. Okay, so I see a few that look interesting, but I think I'll just leave it for now. Now under my apps, you've got agenda, exercise, alarms, weather, settings, relax, and timers. You can obviously add what city you live in for the weather app and change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And really the only other app that isn't on here is Spotify. It says this app is not compatible with your Fitbit device. Now in order to use this app, you have to have a Spotify premium account, which unfortunately I don't have. Now you can also pay with your wrist using Fitbit Pay, which probably isn't a bad idea if you don't want to get your card out all the time, or you just don't trust the machines by swiping your card. You've also got a how to use section, which has a ton of information. And then of course you've got accessories where it just takes you to their website. Some other settings you have is notifications, which you can use for calls, text messages, calendar events, emails, and you can customize it for other app notifications. You can also use quick replies for a few different apps. Then you can decide whether to turn on always vibrate. You can also turn on enable transliteration where it converts everything to latin characters one thing you'll notice if your phone's ringer is not on then you're not going to get the notifications there's also reminders to move and you can set the times and days you can set the main goal to steps distance calories floors and active zone minutes wrist placement is dominant or non-dominant then you've also got device lock, where you can set up a pin, which is probably a good idea if you're gonna use Fitbit Pay. You've also got exercise shortcuts for run, bike, swim, treadmill, outdoor workout, and walk. And then you've got always connected, which is obviously gonna drain the battery more if you leave this on, but I think I will leave that on for now. So when someone's calling you, you've got the option to accept it or decline it. And then if you have a missed call, it will show who called and it gives you the option to call back. When someone sends you a text, there's a few quick replies that you've got, such as yes, no, sounds good, can't talk now, we'll reply later, and what's up. When you swipe to the left, you can do a thumbs up and you get four different face emojis to choose from. On the device itself, you can just tap right on the screen to cycle through what your stats are, such as heart rate, steps, how many calories you burned, how many floors you traveled. Now, if you're like me and you have to work from home quite a bit right now, probably one of the best workouts you could do real quick if you've got some time is just running up and down your steps as long as it goes to a different floor. And before long, your legs are gonna be burning. But it really is a good and easy workout that you don't really need anything. You can see here that I did get 27 floors, which means I went up and down 54 times. By swiping up, you can see a little bit more information about each one. You can also put in your weight, plus you can keep track of how many ounces of water you've drank. And this button on the side isn't really a physical button. It's kind of weird actually. It's more like a pressure sensitive button. So you have to push sort of hard in order to get it to work. As you swipe to the left, you're gonna see exercise, agenda, relax, timers, alarms, weather, and your settings. And then inside settings, you're gonna have brightness, which you can change from auto to dim to normal. You can also change vibrations, turn the heart rate on or off, do not disturb, and you can decide whether you want notifications during sleep. Obviously, once you open up the Fitbit app, it's gonna update all your information. And one thing I've been watching here recently is my sleep score, 
which surprisingly has been a little better than usual. Ever since we've been working from home, for whatever reason, I haven't really been getting a lot of sleep, so I think it's always interesting to look into what my sleep patterns are and to get more information on that. So after testing this out just for a little bit, my first impressions of the Fitbit Charge 4. I think Fitbit is always really good on their build quality, at least the ones that I've used. And I think they give you just enough features for the price that you pay, especially if you're just starting out with a fitness tracker. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit more information on the Fitbit Charge 4. Now I did compare this earlier to my Fitbit Versa. And it was pretty much identical as far as how accurate the steps were. So that's definitely a good thing in my opinion. Although I have to say I do like the physical buttons a little bit better on the Versa. Sometimes you really have to hit the screen hard to get it to respond. But for somebody like my wife who doesn't want something that large on her wrist, I think the Charge 4 is a really good option. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.